Not even in front of your face because you were a coward. You left and went to sleep. You passed out. Not even sleep. You passed out because you were so drunk that you didn't even stay there. And your words are adding years to your sentence, the words that you said. Mike. Yeah, Bill, I was looking at the um, the chat. and People have used the word torturous a couple of times, and I agree 100%. You know, this we only have her word that this started out as, as a game, you know, and that it was all just fun and, you know, and that sort of thing, and it just turned bad. You know, it's likely that it started on the second floor with the suitcase being there, uh, tumbling down the stairs, uh, and we get to the bottom of the stairs. She, she hit him, so you got... The staircase, you got him in the suit, you know, going down the staircase, you got him in the suitcase, you got her hitting him if he got his finger out of the suitcase. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But, um, you know, that's torturous. And then, it, you know, he's not laughing like, hey, 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 honey, this is funny. Um, you know, it's kind of warm in here, you know, that sort of thing. You know, it's, it's kind of warm. I'm kind of confined. I'm a little claustrophobic. No, he actually told her, I can't breathe. And I don't care how drunk you are. That's on you because at that point, she's on notice. So it goes from a possible, possible manslaughter, reckless manslaughter kind of situation to an intentional, you know, torturous situation. Too bad she fell asleep. That's just the way it goes. And he died for it. He paid for that with his life. And so therefore, she's now going to forfeit a good chunk of change. And I think you're right. If he can give her more than the minimum, because remember, like you say, like you've reminded everybody, she's already done maybe five years. If he gives her a 22 and a half to life, she's only going to, she may be possibly eligible for parole after like 16 years. If I'm uh, the Torres family, I'm very upset about that. She, he may go for like a 30 to life if he's allowed to, depending on what the parameters are for a first time offender. But uh, she's looking for a good stay, a well-deserved stay in prison. Yeah, I mean, it's anyone that watches this. Um, from the chat, P, I'm a survivor, and Jorge was a victim. My ex was everyone's friend, and closed the door, then switched. I was trapped. Don't ask why women stay, please, as it's shaming. Look, there's a whole, P, there's a whole psychological reason why victims are victims, you know, and... Uh, there's many reasons, and we're not going to go into it on this show. And we're not certainly not trying to victim shame anyone, but we we wonder that lots of times too, as the police that respond to these domestic violence incidents, and we see victims who have been beaten, victims who have been abused, victims who have been mentally, psychologically, physically abused. And yes, it occurs to us as why do you stay? You know, and we know the system doesn't provide a uh, an alternative that is a panacea for this but it, it's better the whole cr criminal justice system if it any consolation it's better now than it was years ago and that's no consolation really to people that are abused but in the last i'd say 20 25 years there's almost like a um when the police respond to a, a, a domestic violence incident, there's practically like a must arrest almost almost every time. And that when the police respond, like myself, I could speak for myself and Mike will probably tell you the same thing. He was a sergeant. You felt much better putting one person or two people in handcuffs and having the system deal with them than saying, okay, listen, I'm not going to arrest anyone, but you guys mm -hmm. behave. Blah, blah. You you can't trust that. Mm -hmm. So you walk away and one of them kills the other one. Who was the last person there? Oh, Sergeant Cannon was the he he responded there at 9 p.m. And what did he do? Oh, he warned and admonished and he advised them and gave them a, a referral of going to family court. And then the husband stuck a knife in the, the wife's chest. No, thank you. That never, ever happened to me. And obviously it never will because I'm retired. But I erred on the side of locking someone up. And maybe both of them. If that protected the life of one of them and the parameters to do that weren't that wide. And I, as I said, I would err on the side 
of putting someone in handcuffs. Mike, your thoughts. Billy, I agree. I remember talking to a sergeant in uh, years years early when I was a patrolman, and he just asked me, he says, um, you know, how many, what percentage of domestic violence cases are, end with at least even a complaint report? And I said, maybe 10%. He goes, yeah, that's about it. You know, and um, then years, and then you start to think about it. Yeah, nobody even bothered even making a complaint report. And then years later, when I was a sergeant um, in Manhattan, in my precinct, I'm not going to say a precinct, but one of the cops said that's what happened. He went to a, a, a job with a family and uh, they didn't make the arrest. And then an hour and a half later, the husband killed the wife. And uh, so he goes to prison. She's dead. And the cop loses his job. And, um, you know, and it was it was horrible. So I think, you know, New York City erred on the side of safety starting, I think, back in the early 90s or something like that. And I think that's a good way to go. You know, even in here in Winter Haven, Florida, with with, uh, you know, Jorge and uh, George and Sarah, you know, even with that sort of, you know, uh, must arrest kind of situation. And they had been both arrested at least once before. Um, it's still difficult because of the inter-family dynamics, the intra-family dynamics between the uh, boyfriend and the girlfriend and the husband and wife. But at least it's what the municipality, what the state can do to try to stop this stuff uh, from happening, further violence. Because we have seen that in some cases, it does seem to lower the level of violence when people know, no, you can actually get arrested by the police. 